Welcome to the Healthy Skin Show with Jennifer Fugo, where we're flipping everything you've been told about your chronic skin issues upside down and connecting you with alternative solutions your dermatologist never told you about. Welcome back to episode number 250 of the Healthy Skin Show. In today's episode, I want to talk about a curious and extremely frustrating situation where your body could actually develop progesterone sensitivity rashes, also more formally called autoimmune progesterone dermatitis and even progesterone hypersensitivity. Over the years, I've received a bunch of emails from women who are desperately looking for more information on this type of rash that tends to flare like clockwork a few days before the onset of menstruation when progesterone spikes. As of the date of this episode hitting the airwaves, I have worked with one client who struggled with a progesterone sensitivity rash. I've done quite a bit of research on this topic, seeking some answers for her and for others interested in this, as well as asking colleagues who are in the know in terms of hormones about ways to address this. And what I can tell you is that options are still very limited. I'm hoping in time to have a guest on the show to talk about her personal experience with this and what she found helpful. But for now, I feel it worthwhile to share the basics of progesterone hypersensitivity with the hopes to help even just one listener seeking answers. Progesterone hypersensitivity is considered to be a rare condition that impacts a small number of mostly women who are still experiencing a menstrual cycle, though there has been one reported case affecting a man who was supplementing with progestin, reported in literature. Although it was previously coined autoimmune progesterone dermatitis back in 1964, it is generally not considered to be an autoimmune condition, and thus the name progesterone hypersensitivity was suggested as a better alternative. Essentially what happens is that your body becomes reactive to progesterone, And it's not exactly clear why this would happen. Some have pointed to the introduction of man-made progesterone in the form of progestin as a culprit, though hormonal birth control is also sometimes attempted as an option to control the flares. My client with progesterone hypersensitivity did not see or feel any big difference in symptoms when hormonal birth control pills were prescribed by her doctor. Now, what's also interesting is that some women seem to tolerate progestin found in hormonal birth control just fine and only experience this reaction once they stop taking the medication. Another potential trigger could be high doses of progesterone used during IVF rounds. So if you have gone through IVF and you start to notice this trend, know that that could possibly be an important clue in your case. Onset happens typically at some point after a woman begins to menstruate, but pregnancy can also be an unfortunate trigger when progesterone stays high to help maintain the pregnancy. Now, progesterone sensitivity reactions can look like a lot of different things, but here's a list of some of the most common. Eczema flare-ups, hives or urticaria, asthma, anaphylaxis, itchy vulvar area, also known as vulvovaginal pruritus, swelling, sore and swollen mouth, possibly with ulcerations. This is also called ulcerative stomatitis, fluid-filled vesicles and blisters, small blood vessels that burst, causing petechiae or purpura, fixed drug reactions, and Stephen Johnson's-like syndrome. That said, some interesting research I came across points toward an interesting trend of a higher rate of pregnancy loss or miscarriage in those who test positive for progesterone hypersensitivity. So if you are suspicious that your rash could be hormone-related, 
tracking your rash flare cycle could prove incredibly helpful. Considering your body's hormonal rhythm in conjunction with flares could provide clues that put your flares into context. And in this instance, a consistent flare up that starts around the progesterone spike in your cycle. This would be somewhere around day 20 or day 21 of a 28 day cycle is important information that you could then bring back to your doctor. From here, your doctor can do patch testing or run an IgE blood test for progesterone, essentially to see if your body is experiencing an allergic response to your progesterone. Ultimately, that's how the official diagnosis is made, after ruling out a bunch of other potential factors and identifying that reaction to progesterone. This is very different, by the way, from experiencing rash flares around an estrogen spike, which would be from days 12 to 16 in your cycle. Though you can develop an allergy to your own estrogen, I have yet to come across any questions from listeners nor any cases of estrogen hypersensitivity. Typically, when it comes to flare-ups with the estrogen spike, there is a histamine overload component that unfortunately high estrogen can make worse. It's definitely best to get your doctor involved if this is what is happening to you. I encourage you to bring the references shared in this episode that are found in the show notes to your doctor to help you explain what you're experiencing along with the cycle and flare tracking that you've done. And if you do have progesterone hypersensitivity, know that the options are still pretty limited, though I will admit I'm not giving up hope here. I know that we will find some better options as we all explore, experiment, and look into this and listen to what each other's journeys are. Current options that may be offered to you for treatment from your doctor include antihistamines or even mast cell stabilizing medications, hormonal birth control, the biologic drug Zolaire, gonadotropin-releasing hormone antagonists, tamoxifen, and even an ophorectomy, which is unfortunately the surgical removal of the ovaries. I'll also add that elsewhere, I found it mentioned that antihistamines may not be helpful, so you'd have to see if they really do help you. There may also be some desensitization protocols or LDA immunotherapy that you could discuss with your doctor. In the one case that I worked on, the client did see some improvement from working on some other underlying root causes and utilizing certain supplements, but ultimately, the progesterone reactivity was the overriding problem still to this day for her. So if you're hoping that I have some perfect answer for you about this topic, unfortunately, I do not. At this time, the research is still limited, and I will continue to look for options to share here on the Healthy Skin Show. And as I said before, there is a guest I'm working to get here on the show to share her story about this with you, so stay tuned. Now, if you've got any questions or thoughts to share about this episode, or you want to see the resources that I've put into the show notes, head on over to skinterrupt.com forward slash 250, and we can keep the conversation going there. Then take a moment to rate and review the Healthy Skin Show, and make sure to hit the subscribe button so you can always tune in each week to new research, tips, strategies, and inspiration to help you rebuild healthy skin. And let's connect over on social media. I'm at Jennifer Fugo. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.